Okay, good afternoon. We're going to continue with our topic. Last time we discussed the basic concepts of statistics as our new topic, an introduction to the data management, which is part of GE4 mathematics in the modern world. Last time we discussed about the meaning of statistics and the other terms related to it. We also discussed why do we need to study statistics and how can we relate that to our every, everyday living? So we discussed the definitions. We also cited the different applications of statistics in daily life, in different areas of life like education, employment, elections, efficiency report. And we also discussed about the different types of statistics, namely descriptive and inferential. You can actually review the video for the explanation of descriptive and inferential. So here are the examples of descriptive as well as of the inferential statistics that we discussed last time. And I hope that was clear to you. Do you have any questions about the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics? And that was very clear. So again, when we talk about the collection of data per se, collection lang siya, and then presentation, that is just descriptive. But if you are going to do something out of your data, that is you make decision, you make inferences, you make generalizations and predictions, and even decisions in your life based on your data, now you are making inferential statistics. So that's the difference between descriptive and inferential. We also discussed last time the difference between population and sample, where in the population describes the totality or the entirety of the subject of your study in statistics. But most of the time, we cannot reach out all of these people. For example, if your population are people, sometimes mag objects po siya pwede, pero most of the time, tao ang population. So you cannot reach all of them. That is why you need to get few representatives that will represent the voice of the population. So that is what we call the sample, the portion. And even though gamay lang sila ang sample, part lang siya sa population, but still, ang ilahang results, ilahang opinion, ang ilahang answers can be used para himuoni mo siya o generalization sa population. That is the inferential statistics. Clear na ang difference between population and sample. We had a short exercise about that one. It's already done. And now for this afternoon, we will continue with another related terminology in statistics that is all about the variables. A variable is actually a characteristic of interest. So unsa imuhang istadihan sa imuhang mga subjects among research, for example, if you can relate to your research in your high school. So these are the characteristics that interest you, unsa mong ganahan, unsa gusto mong studyhan about that concerning the individual elements of a population or sample. So we will have examples about variables later on. So usually in your study, you can represent that y as, as x or y, letters x or y, because as part of our previous lesson, variables come from the root word vary. It can take any value. So, pwede siya any letter. Another term is unit. Unit, on the other hand, is a single entity which is uh, seen in your sample or population. So, we can have an example later on para ma-differentiate nato ang variable and the unit. So the unit is a single entity, usually a person or an object whose characteristics are of interest. So actually, ang unit is mas ano ni siya? Mas general ni siya as compared to variable. Kaya ang unit, kung kinsa imuhang subject, kinsa imuhang point of interest in your research. Kinsa man imuhang, sa inyuhang senior high school when you conducted research, unsa inyong gisadihan? Kinsa inyong gisadihan? So that will answer the unit of interest. The variables, on the other hand, mo ni siya ang mas specific as compared sa unit. 
Kaya based sa imuhang napili nga unit, unsa nga mga variables dito, unsa mga characteristics nga naa sa unit karon ang imuhang interest ni sadihan. So I hope that's clear with you. Here is the table kaya para mas maklaro na to, the difference between the unit of interest and the variables. So for example, I have a study. I want to make a statistical study about students. So if the student is the unit of interest in a study, what are the different characteristics nga naa sa students nga pwede na ako siya i-check? What are those characteristics? So ang tawag ato mga variables. Example, we have gender. Pwede na ako mag-study o studyante tapos i-check na ako kung lahi-lahi ba ang ilang answer based sa gender. Just like sa math, for example, we have a study kinsa ang mas hawd sa math. Ang babae nga studyante or lalaki. So pwede ni mo imo ang study about that. So gender can be one variable. We can also have age. Pwede ni mo i- Differentiate or i-classify ang imuhang mga students according to age na kay students from the primary level, secondary, high school, or college. So that's another variable. Another variable na pwede ni mo siya i-differentiate ang mga studyante is year level. Kinsa ang pinaka-daghan o absences ang first year, ang second year, third year, fourth year students. So, ang year level can also be another characteristic that will differentiate students. Another is the course, degree, or program. Isa man ang mas daghan o ano, absences. Ang criminal justice education, ang teacher education, ang mga psychology students, etc. So, you can differentiate them by program, by degree, or course. And even by session. Some students are enrolled in the morning session, others are in the evening session or in the afternoon. So these are some of the examples of variables if your unit of interest is student. Kinsa ang pwede pa maka-add o example nga wala pa na mention diri when we talk about student as the unit of interest. Anyone? Nasulat na ba nato tanan diri ang pwede pa i-differentiate sa student? Gender age, year level, course, degree program, session, some more answers. Kung sa pa'y other way nga ma-differentiate na ito ang studyante, the other characteristics nga naa sa ila ha. April boy. Third, sir. Kuan, sir. Pariya sa kuan, sir. Height, sir. Kaya nang matimbang. Nga na, sir. Pwede, pwede. Very good. So you can have the height. Pwede niyo i-differentiate ang mga estudyante based sa height. Pwede ka mag-bracketing. You can have one group ka itong mga 4 feet and below. Second group is 4 feet to 5 feet. Next is 5 feet to 6 feet. And another is 6 feet above. Very good answer. Next is Monsanto. Pwede ang section, sir? Yes, pwede po ang sec section. Kung naay mga sectioning. For example, sa college, sa section A, B, C, and so on. So you have a lot of examples. Let's proceed to the boarding house, another unit of interest. Kung boarding house ang sadihan ninyo, unsa, o di ba, pwede object. Unit of interest can be person, it can also be object. So kung boarding house, that can be a unit of interest. So unsa ang pwede ninyo i-differentiate ng mga karakteristik sa boarding house. So mga variables ang tawag ato. Pwede sila ma-differentiate according to Rent per month. Kaya na mga boarding house nga barato lang na apoy mahal. So the rent per month can be one characteristic that will differentiate the boarding houses. Another is the size in square meters. Kaya na mga boarding house nga dagko, na apoy gamay, na isa lang kakwarto, na apoy shared mo. So that can be another variable, the size, the number of bedrooms, as well as the number of bathrooms. We can add more variables for the boarding house. Benimile. Border, sir. Louder. Borders. Borders. Uh, uh, variables. Borders. Usang usang ako an sa borders. Number of borders. Yes, sir. Number of borders per boarding house that is accepted. Who else? Another one from April boy. Ilorde. Yes, sir. Do you have more answers? 
Kuan sir, design sir. Design, design of the boarding house. So pwede ni mo i- Yes, sir. O sa mga different designs nga available sa boarding house. Ah, uh, unsa nga design kaya anak na? Ah, nang kuan sir, kanang plain ratanan sa atop sir, kanang dili siya por magpakuan ba kanang pat ang atop dili por mag kanang pa kanang, kanang triangle flat lang sa ah, flat. Yes sir, flat lang. Pwede po. We can actually make different classifications of designs kun ana kay study. Pwede po mga two story nga boarding house, duha ka level, na first floor, second floor. Na poy bungalow lang siya, one floor lang siya. So that is also a qualified answer. We'll have the political candidate as another unit of interest. So daghan na mga nanagan karon di ba? Nag-announce sila ang mga candidacy, nga managan sila because hapit ang filing, kay hapit ang election. So political candidate can be another unit of interest. Gusto na ako sadihan ang mga candidate karon nga managan. So what are the different characteristics nga pwede na ako sila i-differentiate? These are variables. Example is age. Another is political party. Gender is another one. Occupation is another one. Who can give me another example of variable under political candidate? Kamatsho. Uh, experience, sir. Very good. Experience. experience or number of years in service sa local government. Very good answer. Yes, sir. How about Texon? Can educational background, sir. Very good. You can also classify them kisa to mga elementary graduate lang, high school graduate, or college graduate, or even mga kuana postgraduate, mga doctors na, mga master's degree holders. So the background, the educational background is a good answer. Dupla for the last one. Hindi. Civil status, sir. Pwede civil status. You can actually differentiate kinsa kaya ang mas nindot o ganang kuan, pamaagi sa pamalaod. Ang mga single, ang mga married, or katong mga byudo-byuda, or katong mga separated, so on. Dabalos, yes, you are recognized. Nag-chat siya, me, sir. How about you? Kung sa ilang ko na, sir. Kung paganda, may tawag na, sir. Kung sa ilang ko na, sir. Ah, yeah. The, the platforms in the government, kailangan oh, present kay uban kay more on war. Very good. More on war on drugs ang uban. Ang uban kay uh, jobs, giving of jobs to people. Ang uban kay kuan po ilaha, more on medicine or health care. So, unsa ang ilang propaganda. You can also differentiate political candidates according to those. So, based on your answers, makita na ko na nasabta ninyo ang pasabot sa variables. The next one is actually, wala ko nagbutang og answer diri because I want you to give your own variables if the unit of interest is restaurant. Kung magsadi ka o mga restaurant, unsa ang mga different variables nga pwede ani? Yes, sir. yes uh, you are recognized. When says Silao? When says Silao? Menu, sir. Menu. The menu. Unsa ang mga gipang offer nga menu? How yes, about, sir. How uh, about Rafanzel? Mga price sa ilang mga baligya, sir. The price of their food, that's correct. Another is Suganov. Size, sir. Pwede size. Size, sa unsa size. size ilang serving. Dagko ba ang ilang mga manok or gamay? O, o, you mean that one or lahi mga size? Size, size sa, sa, size sa ilahang food. restaurant. Sir, Tama ba? Yes, sir. Uh, Naman ko yung mga restaurant nga dagko kaayo pila ka buok table ang ilahang available. Abot siguro 20. Tapos yung mga restaurant nga gagmay lang no? Mga lima ra siguro ka table or napulo. So it can also be part of the variables. The size of the restaurant. Villar Mero. Sir, ano sir? Uh, interior design sa ano sir? With the interior uh, design of the restaurant. Kaya may mga restaurant nga daghang mga bulak, daghang tanom, outdoor ang design, ang uban kay kanang closed door and then aircon. So that can be part. Imo lang i-classify, specify what are those designs. So okay. I think you have a lot of answers. Thank you so much for answering. While the others daghan po mo mga ideas no, pero you can actually give your ideas sa chat na lang sa Quipper messages. Because we still have service is also good Monsanto. Still have to discuss the different kinds of variables. Even though this uh, topic is already given to you, 
previously sa first part, when we talk about katong mga nominal, katong mga ratio, if you can still remember the, the scales of measurement. Quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative, again, when we talk about quantity or quantity, it's all about numbers, numerical value. So quantitative variables, pwede ni siya mahatag nga numero. For example, katong gisulti ganina nga, size of the restaurant. Kung ang size, pwede ka maghatag. Og, siguro ang overall size sa lang restaurant is 80 square meters. Pwede mo ana, di ba? So imong gihatag is number, therefore it is a quantitative variable. It can be classified actually into discrete and continuous. So under sa quantitative variable, napakay duha ka classifications, discrete and continuous. So we have to identify unsa difference aning discrete ug continuous. When we say discrete variables, these are countable results. Ang iyahang answer Kung maghatag kag variable na yahang answer is whole number or counting number, then this is discrete variable. Katong gihatag na kong example ganina nga size of the restaurant, na ay mga size sa restaurant nga siguro 100.5 square meters. So na naman siya decimal, so dili na siya mabilong sa discrete variables. Kaya sa discrete variables, they are just represented by counting numbers. Nasabtan ninyo, Discrete is that, is that, Thank you. What are the other examples of discrete variables? We have the number of teachers, for example, in the College of Accounting Technology. So, di ka pwede maghatag og uh, pila ka book teachers sa inyong department sa uh, accounting. Puan, five and one half. Di ka pwede maghatag og decimal. So, dapat whole number lang, Jod. So, this is an example of discrete variables. When you count of uh, persons, dapat discrete siya. The number of books sold in the National Bookstore last week, di man pwede nga, pila kalibro ang nahalin, kuan 10.5, kaya gikawat tong katunga sa customer, dili pwede. So you have to give the exact counting, so this is an example of discrete variable. The number of students enrolled is also an example of discrete variables. So sa pa gihata ganin ng example nga, pwede siya mabutang sa discrete variables. Ato sa borders, ganina na naghatag, number of borders in the boarding house. That is a good example of discrete variable. Nga naman, you are counting the number of occupants, the number of persons. So that is a discrete variable. On the other hand, continuous ang tawag sa iya hanga variable kung dili siya discrete. These are variables that can assume any numerical value over an interval or several intervals, meaning pwede na siya mag-decimal-decimal or na na siya mga half-half or three-fourth na siya fraction. These are the results of accurate measurements. Example, katong gihata ganyan, katong mga i-classify daw niya ang mga estudyante according to height, na may mga height nga na yung mga point something. So height is a continuous variable. Another example is the cholesterol reading of an individual. Pwede ka makakuha ng mga decimal, kaya accurate man siya ng measurement. And even the income of an employee, kaya ang income, pwede man po na yung mga centavos. So that is an example of continuous variables. Clear na ba ang discrete and continuous? Yes, sir. Very yes, sir. Clear. Yes, sir. On the other hand, kung naantay quanti, naapuntay, Quali. So, qualitative variable. Ang katong dili ma-express sa numbers, mga words, description siya, then this is under the qualitative or qualitative. Ang uban kay pagbasa is qualitative variable. So, that's okay. It can be gender, male, female, marital status, section. Katong nag-answer ganyan, nag-section daw ang variable for the students. The pain level the ice cream flavor, etc. Those are some of the examples of qualitative var variable. If you can still recall the answers given ganina sa unit of interest is political candidate. Aha dito ang qualitative or qualitative variable. Political party. Civil, sta diba? Civil status. Political party. The platforms. Kaya man siya pwede ma-express into numbers. So these are descriptions. So those are examples of Qualitative variable. Occupation. Occupation is also good.
Let's have a short background exercise. Then. Background also. Let's have a short exercise specification. Quanti or quali? Number one. The height of giraffe living in India. Quanti. Quali. Quanti. 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 It's number. Religious affiliation. Quali. 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 Favorite Quali. movie. Quali. 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 Daily intake of proteins in milligrams. Quantity. 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 It's number one. Nationality. Quality. 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 Number of days of absences. Quantity. Marital status. Number of houses built in one month. Quantity. Quantity. Monthly phone deals. Number of students failed. Very good. So perfect mo dito sa classification of quantity and quality. How about classification as discrete or continuous? The number of bread baked each day. Discrete. 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 Discrete.
the platforms presented by the political candidates. So, katunga mga answers dito, data na po ang tawag ato. So, tanan mo tubag atong imuhang mga variables, data ang tawag ato. It also means raw information recorded and used for the purpose of analysis. So, unsa yung reason ni mo na nakakulay ka o data? It's because nakakay gusto i-analyze. Momo na siya ang pinaka-meaning, di ba, part sa definition sa statistics ato ang dimension before. Examples of data, we have Lewis scores on five math tests. So, nagkuha ni mo ang iyang data. Okay, siguro kung ano niyo yung average, tanaw niyo kung makapasar ba siya sa scholarship or dili. So the decision to promote Louie to be a scholar or not, statistically dapat supported siya. So mag-base yung ka sa data. So that's a good example. Another is Marie's daily wage for three days. Another is shampoo brands used by 30 customers. Gusto niyo may balan sa iyo, pinakasikat nga shampoo sa inyong purok. So nagkanda ka o survey. So, katong mga ninggawas nga answer, these are data. Klaro na, no? Data, who can give an example? Another example nga, wala rin mention din. Aside sa scores, benimili, aside sa wage, and aside sa brand of shampoo. Sir, kala ka nang, pag human sa exam, sir, kala nang mag-concern ba kung pila ka book na kako o 60, pila ka book na kako, gano? Kana, pwede na siya. Pwede siya data. The frequency, frequency of students who got... The frequency, sir. Oh, frequency Mama, of students. Uh, Morich Texon. Morich, you're raising your hand. Kwan, sir, kanang, try lang, sir, kanang, kwan, kan data sa load, sir. Uy, ginoo ko. Ano ka, literal, literal, kayo si, ano, literal, na joker, kay ka, ano, literal, kay ka. Pero kung lang, ang tanak, kung sa nga brand, ang imuhang ginakuha nga data, Globe, Sun, Smart, kana, pwede na siya mag data. Pero katong data, pila ka kuan, pwede ito na ito siya i-modify para mapasar siya as part of our example. Liboon, how about Liboon? Kanang, kuan sir, pila ka buhok mga absente si Jante, taga Bernes sir. Oh, kada Bernes, especially Bernes, di ba, kay padulong na weekend. That is a good example of data. So kung ikaw nag-record yung ka, that is actually collection na na siya ni mo. Pwede na ni mo siya gamito na. As... Part sa study. For example, nag-studyhan ni mo nga nung dag-studyante ang mga absent kada beerness. So, dapat na kay data sa mga number of students na nag-absent. Compare ni mo unsa dito nga course or unsa nga program ang dag-absent kada beerness. Criminology ba? Accounting? Education? Etc. So, that is a good example of data. The question right now is, di unsa pagkuha ang data? How are data gathered? So, katong senior high school mo, gano'n sa inyo pagkuha sa mga data? Ang uba, naging mahimot na siguro data, survey, no? Through survey, sir. Nag-survey. Very good. So, kamo ba yun mismo ni Adto? Sa mga yes, sir. 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 Naganaw sa mga buwan ni Adto questionnaire, sir. Naganaw sa mga buwan ni Adto questionnaire. Ang uba, questionnaire, tapos inyo hindi. Sir, nag-buwan ni questionnaire, sir, about sa mga topic. Pero nag-pandemic naman. Sir, nag-buwan ni Adto questionnaire, sir. Ang uban no, kanang himu-himu lang ka para makagraduate. So, wala. Ang ginoon na yung bahala yeah. sa inyo. Ano. Ang importante is, nakabalo mo ang saan paghimu sa research. Pero, yeah. dapat, you have to be honest. Kay part ba sa research is ethics, di ba? Nga dapat, tinuod yung mong i-present na data. So, what happened kay underman mo sa pandemic period, di ba? I-allow mo yeah, na nag mo sa mga tao, dude, o nag-survey? Yes, sir. Yes, Freedom ng pindasan, sir. <laughs> Wala, sir, ay, sa ah, school. Okay. Itong time, sir, gade 11, man may ato, sir. Gade 11, kwa ato, sir. Nga, nag-conduct sir, me, sir. Time, time, sir. So, na pa. Kaya ang uban ka ron, they are not allowed to do face-to-face -face gathering of data. They can use Google Form. Tato ka nang ipang-send yes, sa... Yes, sir. Oh, ka nang ginapasagot, sir. Na, Please answer this. Just click the link. Tama, dahi, sir. Naging unato dahi, mi, sir, sa oh. great job. Okay, siguro katong wala pa yung pandemic na time, that is allowed nga mag-face-to-face yung ka, mag-interview yung ka. Pero right now, uh, we are in the new normal. So these are the methods. Pwede observation lang. You can also do interview. Labi na kung allowed na mag-storya dyan mo, mag-dool na dyan. Or the interview can also be done online. Naman siguro interview nga, mag-ano lang mo no, mag-zoom or even mag-chat, mag video call. You can still get information. Questionnaire, ang very, pinaka common ka itong nagamit o mga printed questionnaire or ka itong nag-send o Google form. That's one way to collect the data. 
and then database. Sa kaning database is taka system na siya gani, na magkuha lang kag data dito. For example, na gusto niyo mahibalan, uh, unsa nga mga colleges and universities ang daghag estudyante, daghag enrollment. So mo na lang ka sa database sa CHED, tapos makakuha kag data dito. So that is the example of database. So these blockchain, are the different... sir. Yes, taxon. Kanang blockchain po, sir. Unsa man na siya? Kanang tabukanan sa data sa Bitcoin bitaw, sir. Yeah, if you are talking about mga Bitcoin. Crypto. Sige, mga crypto, crypto diha. Okay, let's proceed. There are two classifications of data. Nata ginatawag ng primary data, napote ginatawag secondary data. Now, what's the difference between the two? Kung primary data, siguro ang most of you nagkuha primary data. Katoganing sila mismo ang ningduol. These are informations or facts obtained from the first person accounts such as katong mga personal interviews, autobiography, katong gibasa jud nimo ayang gihimo gani nga ano. Kanang ginay nagahimo siya iyang life story, dito ka nagkuha. Murag first hand jud siya ba diaries in honesty and truth. Wala ka nagbase sa kung unsa gisulti sa uban sa iyaha jud ka nagkuha og data that is primary data. Examples, kada nagsurvey jud ka, gisurvey nimo for example imong silingan. Yang answer gikuha po dai nimo so katong yang answer nga data that is primary data kaysa iyaha jud gikan interview focus group discussion na nag himo ba ani sa una kanang nagtawag lang gani imong pipila tapos sila gipa-answer ninyo ben nuwaja wala sir So while waiting for the presentation, So again, primary data is when you are getting the data from the person himself. While ang secondary data, that will be the next slide, is all about katong data nga imong gikuha gani because dili ni mong makuha ang tao, mangayot na lang kaog ideas. So ako man ay makuha ni mo ang mga different ideas. How will you get information? For example, gusto ni mong interview hon si Manny Pacquiao. Pero di limon naman siya maano, part na siya sa imong study. So what will you do? Okay, di research. What will you do? Unsa nga research imong moon? Research about his life. So aha man na makita ang research about his life. Google. <laughs> Pwede. You can have the Google or imong mga Wikipedia. Pero Wikipedia is not actually re recognized as uh, a source of information in research. Okay, anyone can upload. Dili man, bisag kinsa magod, pwede maka-upload yung information sa, what do you call this one? Wikipedia. So, actually, ang uban ang information, dili accurate. So, isa ka mga nagkuha o Wikipedia. So, careful mo sa Wikipedia because it is not actually recommended to be used. So, kung dili ni mo siya ma-interview, you can actually... Naman siguro yung ano, kaning magazine or book na nag-talk about Manny Pacquiao. You can get your information from that. So, pwede to siya. Himuuni mo as your source of information. So, that's one. What else? So, pwede ka sa magazine, pwede ka sa libro. Pwede po ka sa if you are watching news. Di ba sa TV, daghan mo mga ano about Manny Pacquiao? You can actually take down sa katong mga gipang suti sa mga newscasters. Then you are going to be getting the information. Pwede to siya, himuon ninyo para sa... Or mangita kaglibro nga about sa mga kagin ni Manny Pacquiao. Or pwede mga autobiography or biographies of Manny Pacquiao. Pwede to siya. So akong ibalik o share sa inyo. Ako, bagay sa search. So, a mobile example, or pwede, very good. For example, taga-Jensen ka, tapos kaila ka sa iyahang mga igsuon or iyahang mga kaila, then 
you can make an interview pero dili kay Manny Pacquiao kun dili sa iyahang mga kaila that is now what we call as the secondary data so definition of secondary data these are taken from books newspapers and magazines various reports that are done by reliable writers authors or reporters with unquestioned integrity in their work kaya mo yung mga kuan nga dili nimo kaya i reach out ng mga tao nga kailangan nimo so you need to get something to mangita kag laing tao para mo kuha og data to mo transfers ako ha Ah, ka na transfer, sir. Okay, hey, hey. Okay, hello, hello. Hi, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, again, balik ta. So primary versus the secondary data, this is now the comparison between the two. When we talk about primary again, you are getting the data from the person first hand. While for the secondary data, murag nag-base lang ka sa sulti sa uban or sa report. Kani man kung kasagaran sa secondary data, dili kay siya gina-welcome sa research kay dili man gud siya valid ngano man. Dili man siya gikan sa tao jud mismo jud ang data. Pwede siya mahulog man gud nga chismis. Yes. For example, katong, pwede mo madungagan siya. Oh, madungagan ka. For example, katong kay Manny Pacquiao, mag ano ka, mag-interview ka or even kay kay Isko Moreno or kaysa pa ni mga nanagan diri gusto ni mo interviewon sila. Nya, dili sila ang nag-answer, ila lang mga kaila nya. Wa kakabalo ila mga kaila is naikalagot sa ilaha. So, ang answer is dili na accurate. So, between the two, primary versus secondary data, mas okay kung ang imuhang kuha on jud is primary data. And sa inyong experience Unsa man inyong data kay kuha sa research? Primary or secondary? Primary, sir. High school? Primary, sir. Sir, unsa yung Delphi Technique, sir? Primary. Very good. Kaning Delphi Technique, this is actually part of statistics nga calculation of the answers given by your respondents. So, Delphi Technique ang tawag, Anna. So, th this is not very much common. Okay, highly you, statistics, manggo din siya. Highly statistical din siya nga process. Usually, ginagamit din siya sa mga scientific research. Now, usually, sa ito, kay mga social social science, manggo ta, ka nang more on the perception of people. Ano, gani? So, atong ginagamit is survey. Kani mga poll, kani mag, ano ka, kisa yung ganahan, then magpaboto ka. So, that is the poll. Interview, uh, focus groups. Usually, ang focus group, ginagamit din siya when you are doing quali, katong mga naghimog quali nga research, nabi nag-quali dere? Kay quanti mo ang common. Isa nag, nai nag-quali, so nag-interview. Get 11, sir. So focus group, very good. Focus group is actually one of the methods. Kaya ang mga answer mo nila, kaya delete number, di ba? Kaya imuha mo dyan silang pangutan, nga nung nainaani man niya siya, so taas dyan kaya nilang answer. So, pwede ka mag-focus group discussion, mag-recorder ka, Anna. Kailangan pa man nyo mo i-transcribe ang mga answer, di ba? Itong mga nag-quali. While for the secondary data, mag-basa na lang ka mga financial reports. For example, gusto nyo mo mabalaan ang, ang, ano, ang income, ang growth, nag-gain ba? Especially karoon ang ABS-CBN, kaya wala sila yung franchise. Kaya wala kay kailangan at taga-ABS-CBN, so nangayon na lang ka mga financial reports. So, that is secondary data. Sales report, Government reports, for example, gusto ka makabalo sa government ng mga ano, mga issues, tapos wala kay kaila sa government, so nangita na lang kag report, that is secondary, and even the vision, the mission statement, and anything that you can find in the internet, those are secondary data. The gets ninyo? So between the two again, when we talk about research, ang mas ginapaburan jud is the primary data. The last part of our discussion before we end is the sampling techniques. Giunsa ninyo pagkuha ang inyong mga data sa inyong mga respondents. Kaya usually, daghan mga good kainan sila, di ba? Did you use simple random sampling? 
Isa na gamit og simple random sampling. Or did you use very good systematic sampling or stratified sampling cluster sampling these are the probability type of sampling mo siya ang usually ginagamit sa academic research first is a simple random sampling this is a sampling technique that gives every member of the population an equal chance so kung gusto nimo fairness ya daghan kaayo imuhang unit of interest population is daghan kaayo pero gusto nimo gamay lang ang pilion pero fair siya nga everyone will have the chance simple random sampling imong gamiton this is actually the pinaka common and this can be best done through lottery kanang pwede magbunot-bunot ka so ang apilon ako akong study for example kanisa section kaning section daghan kaayo mo 50 pero gamay na ako ang kailangan nga data mga napulo lang so magbunot-bunot ka kato mga nabunutan mo ato imong kuwaan og data. So that's simple random. Example is the Philippine Statistical Authority uses simple random sampling in asking detailed questions about the lives of Filipinos to draw conclusions about the whole population. So katong i-review na ito ang definition sa inferential statistics, nga daghan kaayo ang tao sa Pilipinas, hindi makayag interview tanan. So ang PSA, nag-simple random na na sila, pili-pili lang kasi mapilian nila Kato ang interview niya ang result ato mo ano to siya ang conclusion para sa tanan so that simple random sampling wala kay wala kay criteria basta napilian lang na nimo siya simple random klaro ba yes sir so when to use the simple random sampling if you are making statistical inferences if you have the complete list so nakay kompleto nga listahan sa mga members niya gamay lang imong pilion so that is simple random. And then if you have a lot of time and resources to conduct the study, that's the simple random. Ang systematic sampling, random gihapon ni siya, pero it involves choosing your sample based on a regular interval. So dilike siya randomized as compared to the simple random sampling. Kaya nga naman, naman kagipili dali nga, Pattern, for example, sa katong klase ka ang napod ng 50 students, niya 10 lang yung pilion. Kung random sampling ka, pwede ka magbunot-bunot. Pero kung systematic sampling ang imuha is, nagpili lang ka, uh, first row akong pilion, uh, and then kaninga row. So kung ikaw na nagbuot, kung kisa yung pilion, based on patterns, then that is already systematic sampling. So for example, ah, uh, Maghatakag number tanan mga customers katong mga nakakuha og number 2 4 6 8 10 mo to ang pwede mo adto diri kay akong interview hon that is systematic sampling the gets ninyo yes sir thank you it can be used if you don't have a complete list of the population stratified sampling on the other hand is appropriate if you want to ensure that specific characteristics are proportionally represented in the sample. So, stratified is from the word strata. So, imu ang strata ang pasabot ana is group. You, you split the population into strata or groups. Example, gender, age, and then randomly select from each of the groups. So, for example, ang imong study is about college students in Tagum City. So, what are the different schools in Tagum? College. Uh, College level, so natay UM, na ay USEP, na ay St. Mary's, sa pa other mga schools diha. So dapat na akay mga sample from different schools. So katong school, mahulog to siya nga group or strata. So magkuha ka siguro 25 sa UM, another 25 sa SMC, and then 30 ba karon sa USEP. So since nag-allocate na ka number of respondents or sample per strata or group, then that is under stratified sampling. So, bawat school, pwede na ka dito mag-random-random. So, sa UM, pwede ka mag-systematic sampling. Sa SMC, pwede ka mag-random sampling. Sa USEP, pwede po ka mag-random sampling. So, since na kay different groups ka ron, then ang tawag ato is stratified sampling. Nasabta ninyo? Stratified ang tawag anak kay grupo-grupo naman ni mo siya. Example, in your study, you need to consider children. So, ang children na po, na, na po sila different group. Teenagers included as well as adults. So, you need to have the respondents coming from. So, dapat na kay respondents age 6 and below. Na po 7 to 13. 
9, 14 to 19 years old, 9, 20 to 25, 30 to 35, 36 to 40, and 41 and above. So dapat, so tiyan kasi mo ang teacher nga, kailangan magkuha yung example ani, interviewon yun din mo kanin mga inani nga edad, kay para mahuman imong research. So since gigrupo man mo siya, di ba na napoy stratum, na napoy strata, the plural form is strata, Kung nanay grouping, tapos kailangan mag-allocate ka og number per group, that was already stratified sampling. I hope clear sa inyo ha. Ang cluster sampling, on the other hand, is a sampling method where the researcher creates multiple clusters of people from a population where they are indicative of homogeneous characteristics and have an equal chance of being part of the sample. Pariparihag ya po niya sa stratified sampling, pero... Ang cluster sampling is mas daku, mas uh, malawak ang iyang coverage. Katong example na ito ganina sa certified is by age level, siguro sa isa, isa ka community lang. And then katong school na SMC, na UM, na USEP, etc. Gamay lang to siya in a locality. Pero when you talk about cluster, daku na rin siya. So by cluster na ka, so sa isa ka lugar, pwede pa na siya na ay mga subgroup. For example, an organization is looking to survey the performance of internet providers across the Philippines. The organization can divide the entire country sa so kotibo Pilipinas ang imuhang subjects, imuhang research, imuhang study. So dako kaayo imuhang scope Philippines. So i divide mo siya into cluster, into cities. And katong city within the city na napoy grupo, di ba? Kailan napoy mga barangay within the city? So, ang city ang cluster, then within the cluster, na yung mga sub-clusters, then select towns na po with population and so on. That is an example of cluster sampling. So, when to use cluster sampling? This uses a large number of samples since each cluster is composed of a large sample. So, you can use this one kung dako kaayo ang imuhang scope na kailangan sa dihan. So, mga examples na gagamit ang cluster sampling, so, kanyang mga SWS survey, kanyang mga nationwide survey, and even katong mga worldwide na survey around the world. Cluster sampling ang ilahang yi, kimo, na dapat represented ang isa ka area. So, kung worldwide ni siya, dapat na representation ang Asia, na representation ang Europe, ang Africa, etc. So, cluster sampling ang tawag ana. Katong ganina nga certified random is gagmay lang itong grupo. Naklaro ninyo? Yes, sir. Very good. Yes, sir. Then, before we end, this have Slovene formula. That's another information that you have to know. This is used in calculating the number of samples from the identified population. So, for example, nakay 1,000 kabuok tao sa inyong barangay. Kailangan magpili lang kag sample. So, pila man kabuok out of 1,000, pila akong apilun si study ani. So, ang ginagamit usually is the Slovene's formula. The Slovene's formula is morning gibutang dere, pero we will not be calculating. Ipakita lang na ako sa inyo ang Slovene formula. And uh, I don't know kung nagamit na ba sa uban during their high school. Nagamit yun ninyo when you identified your sample, number of sample. Anyone? Isa familiar sa Slovene? Wala ba, sir? Murag wala, no? So for example, 1,000, 1,000 kabuk tao sa umuang ko answer, sa umuang barangay niya. Gamay raman ako ang kailangan nga data. So pila akong kuhaon. Okay na ba na pulo? So kailangan nato siya i-calculate. So kaning capital letter N, mo siya ang number of population. So katong 1,000 divided by, imuhang i-add ang 1 plus 1,000 times. Ang E is katong margin of error. Tapos i-square to ni mo siya. So ang margin of error usually sa... Statistics is 0 0.05. Mo pa yung gigamit sa una? 0 0.05. Hala, ang one kayo mo nagulang kabalo. Unsay, unsay, unsay yes, margin sir. of error niyo. Pila ang kanang allowed nga error, margin of error sa inyong statistics? Ah, wala siguro ka kabalo ang uban. Kay, ang uban kayo naging muhimura. Kalimot okay, naman sir. So actually, 0 0.05, level of significance, 0 0.05 mana usually. So 0 0.05 yung ikuan sa E, i-substitute mo then. By using your calculator, 1,000 divided by 1 plus 1,000 times 0 0.05 squared. 
So using your calculator, magawas ang answer na na siya decimal, 285.71 and so on. So out of 1,000, magkuha lang ka o 285. So nakuha na niyo ang number of sample. So sa Lovin formula ang tawag ato. And for the non-random sampling, mo na siya ang dili ka ginagamit. These are quota, purposive, and incidental. Ang sa quota sampling, the researcher makes a tailored sample to achieve the required number of sample, which is in proportion to some characteristics of population. So, mura nag-quota-quota lang ka. Apila ka buok, imuhang gusto diri. Kaya para lang, mahuman imuhang research. This is not actually advice when you are doing academic research. Ang purposive sampling po, okay, this is also known as judgmental or expert sampling. Kaya namili mang kadiri o imuhang respondents. Ay, di ko ganahan. Ano niya? Kanila ako ang apilon. So, nakay purpose, nakay murag, nakay reason ba nga nung kanila sila. Gusto niyo nga, nindot ang mga sa mga research. So, dito niyo pa apilon tong mga uban nga. For example, sa math, adi ka, no, di na ako apilon ni siya. Kaya basig maguba akong research, pangit ang result. So, kanila sila kung apilon kay mga haod ni sila. So, that is purposive sampling. Dili po ni siya kaayog na encourage when you talk about academic research. Allocating more samples for a particular group that displays the characteristics of a population. On the other hand, na po tayo ginatawag o incidental sampling. Kasi incidental sampling, the researchers select respondents that are readily available during the conduct of the study. For example, kailangan na i-submit ang imuang research karong adlawa. Kulangan pa kag-sample. So wala kayo choice. Kung kisa itong rangabot ng imuang mga classmate, mura ito imuang ipa-answer. So that is incidental sampling. Nag-gets ninyo? Incidental sampling, wala na kayo choice. Mauna na lang ninyo imuang nabilin ng mga tao. Sila na ready. So sila lang imuang ipa-answer. Purposive is ikaw mismo na mili. Quota is nag-apas lang ka kung pila ka book ang kailangan ni mo i-achieve na number. And all of these three are not very much recommended when you are doing research. Question so far about data management, data presentation, okay. data collection. Okay. The last part actually of this PowerPoint is all about the presentation of data. Different ways, kabalo naman taan nino, we can present the data in textual method, kanang ato ang i-write in paragraph form. We can also have tabular method. Most of the data are presented in table para mas nindot. Ang uban po is by graphical method. So here are some of the examples. The bar graph, the linear graph. Kani unsa makita nimo kung nagtaas ba siya nagbaba kaning linear graph makita man gud nimo ang trend kung pataas ba siya or pababa ba siya so trends in the prevalence of malnutrition among Filipino children under 2 years old so makita nimo dire ang stunting ang wasting ang underweight ug ang overweight so it's a good thing na nakita nimo ang underweight na sa baba so mas daghan tong stunting na pay wasting and underweight Circle graph or pie graph is also common. That is one way to present data in an organized manner. Makita mo din mo ang pinakadakog area sa circle mo, ito ang pinakadako. For example, case classification of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Western Visayas. So 60% ang asymptomatic and then naapoy mga severe, naapoy mga just like influenza lang daw ang ilang mga cases. So makita ni mo sa graph. Bisa tanawan lang ni mo siya the information makuha. That's one way to present data. Pictograph or pictogram is not very common, pero this is also used to present data when you are counting people. So, mas okay siguro, ibutan na lang ang number, kaya ang pictogram, ang drawing-drawing pa ka. Another is map graph. You are going to draw the map and present the different areas involved. So, na siya map. That is map graph. The example is the map graph for the Novel coronavirus tracker ah dito nga region ang pinakadaghan so that is one example and the last one is the histogram and frequency polygon kanang ipang tapad tapad dani mo ang mga bar graph para makita ni mo ang trend kung ah ang pinakataas ang pinaka pinakababa or nagpasaka ba siya or nagpababa that is histogram or frequency polygon. So we just discussed the different ways to present data, how to gather data, and how to manage data.
Do you have any questions? None, sir. Wala, sir. No, sir. Klaro ba? Klaro ba? Are you sure nga nasabta ninyo ang presentation nato for this afternoon? Yes, sir. We, we will still... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going yes, to continue sir. next meeting, that's on Friday, with the last part of our discussion para sa third examination. Kaya ang third examination will be all about statistics man. Statistics, data management, and then the measures of central tendency and a little bit of variability, katong variation. So dito lang mag-end ang coverage ato ang third examination. So, okay, sir. For now, I will stop recording. Then I will entertain some questions.